Meiosis and Sexual Life Cycles Part 3. We're going to fast forward to the place that we left off in Part 2. If at any time you want to review, just pause the podcast and review the slides that you need to review. All right, part three, double division of meiosis. Remember that in meiosis, we're going to be making cells that go from diploid to haploid, two sets of chromosomes to one set of chromosomes. Now we're going to go into the details on how that works. During interphase of meiosis, we have to make copies of the chromosomes. That's during the S phase of interphase. So during the S phase of interphase, every chromosome gets a sister chromatid, and that happens during meiosis as well. Here we have the two chromosomes, not a human cell, we have 46, being copied during the S phase of interphase. We'll be taking notes on that later. Now during meiosis one, this is fairly important. The first cell division during meiosis divides out the homologous chromosomes. Remember that you have two of every chromosome. During mitosis, you do not divide out the homologous pairs. You just divide the sister chromatids. During meiosis one, the homologous chromosomes pair up and then the pairs separate into their own cell. Now if you take a look here, we're starting with a diploid cell. Remember diploid means two sets. When we divide the homologous chromosomes into separate cells, now we only have one set of chromosomes, and that's haploid. So during meiosis one, we're going from diploid to haploid. Once again, the first cell division of my meiosis divides the homologous chromosomes, the homologous pairs. During the second phase of meiosis, we divide the sister chromatids, just like mitosis. And that's a key learning idea as well. Meiosis II is just like mitosis. However, in mitosis, we're going from diploid to diploid, two sets of chromosomes to two sets of chromosomes. During meiosis II, we're going from haploid to haploid. Notice that we have the chromosome here consisting of two sister chromatids. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate and now we have cells with their own copy of the chromosomes. We do that for the other cell that was made during meiosis one, separating out the sister chromatids, and now we have two cells with copies of that information. Notice the end results of meiosis compared to mitosis. In meiosis, we produce four cells, not just two cells. Also, the cells produced during meiosis are not genetically identical to the starting cell. That's another difference between meiosis and mitosis. During mitosis, the ending cells were the same as the starting cell. Preparing for meiosis. So a few more details. However, these details are not too much different from mitosis. Basically, you have a PMAT for meiosis 1 and a PMAT for meiosis 2. Remember that PMAT stands for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The reason why we have to divide our chromosomes is that we're using the same kind of enzymes, the same machinery basically, that we used in mitosis, even though the products are going to be a little bit different. Meiosis evolved after mitosis. It's basically building upon the stuff that happens during mitosis. The first division of meiosis separates homologous pairs. Now, we have another thing going on during meiosis 1. During prophase 1, we have the chromosomes condensing. The nuclear membrane breaks down, just like mitosis. However, if you notice over here, when the chromosomes pair up at this area where they overlap, we're going to exchange DNA. We'll talk more about that later. However, the group of four sister chromatids, all lined up next to each other, is called a tetrad. Synapsis is a verb describing the event of swapping little pieces of DNA that's going to increase the genetic diversity of the cells being produced. During metaphase, we have the homologous chromosomes paired up, and then during anaphase, we separate out those chromosomes, and now the chromosomes during telophase are in their own cell. Cytokinesis will divide that cell into two. Once again, we're going from two sets of chromosomes, one set, one set here, two set here, to one set, two sets to one set, two sets to one set. 
During meiosis II, we also have a PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. During metaphase, the chromosomes line up in a straight line, just like mitosis. Then, during anaphase, the sister chromatids separate. And then at the end of uh, telophase, we have our two new nuclei being made. Cytokinesis will divide the cell in half. And now each cell has one of the sister chromatids that separated out during anaphase. Notice over here, the blue chromosome is not going to end up in the, the big blue chromosome. It's not going to end up in the cells that were produced on this side of the, the process of meiosis. Notice the sister chromatids are just separating out, just like mitosis during meiosis II. So, steps of meiosis. First division separates homologous chromosomes. We have an interphase that happens before. Prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. If you see a 1 after, the phase of my, uh, after a phase, it's not referring to the mitosis. It's referring just to meiosis and sex cell making. Over here we have meiosis 2, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, just referring to the second round of cell division that happens in meiosis. If you see a 2 after a phase, that means it's a meiotic phase, not a mitotic phase. Second division of meiosis separates just the sister chromatids, going from haploid to haploid. Here we have some diagrams. We have interphase uh, before meiosis. This happens in the uh, testes and ovaries. Can't see the chromosomes distinctly during interphase, but we are making a copy of the sister chromatids. Then over here during prophase, we have this, um, this area called the chiasmata. That's basically the crossing over event that's going to swap pieces of chromosomes. We have during metaphase, the pairs pairing up of the chromosomes, the homologous chromosomes. Then during anaphase, the homologous chromosomes separate from each other, but the sister chromatids are still attached. During meiosis II, we have two new cells. The prophase part of meiosis II has just the chromosomes condensing. Metaphase II has the chromosomes lining up, just like mitosis, no pairs anymore. We separated those out in meiosis I. During anaphase II, we separate out the sister chromatids, and by the end of telophase two, we have two new daughter cells produced for each one of the two cells made during meiosis one for a total of four cells. And these are all haploid cells, going from one set to one set. Here's some pictures, prophase one, chromosomes condensing. Metaphase one, we have the homologous pairs lining up, pairing up. Anaphase one, homologous pairs separate. Metaphase two, we have the single line of chromosomes getting ready for anaphase. Anaphase, sister chromatids separate, which does not happen during anaphase one. And then telophase two, we have our daughter nuclei made for a total of four cells. Now in men, each one of these four cells will become a sperm. However, in females, only one becomes an egg. The other three become something called a polar body that gets reabsorbed by the female. Also, men do a lot of meiosis. They produce millions of cells a day, whereas women only produce one egg per month. Over here, we have a comparison of mitosis and meiosis. And this is a good review diagram that we're going to write down after we discuss it. Mitosis, we have uh, four chromosomes, two of each type. 2n equals 4. That means the two sets of chromosomes equals four chromosomes total. During PMAT, we have the chromosomes lining up in a single line in mitosis, separating out the sister chromatids, and now you have two cells that are genetically identical to the starting cell. This is how all your body cells are made, called somatic cells. During meiosis, making sex cells, also called gametes, we have during meiosis one, the homologous chromosomes pairing up. Notice they don't pair up during mitosis. During meiosis one, we have the homologous chromosomes separating to separate cells, going from two sets to one set, diploid to haploid. Then during meiosis two, we have the sister chromatid separating, and we're going from haploid to haploid. However, the haploid cells at the end of meiosis are only going to be single-stranded chromosomes, not double-stranded. Notice that the four cells made by meiosis are genetically different from the starting cell, whereas the four cells made by mitosis are the same as the starting cell. 
Here we have a comparison of mitosis versus meiosis. During mitosis, we have one cell division, just separating out the sister chromatids. During meiosis, we have two divisions. We're separating out the homologous chromosomes first, and then the sister chromatids. In mitosis, the daughter cells are clones. They're genetically identical to the parent cell. In meiosis, they're, the daughter cells are different from the parent cell. Mitosis produces two cells. Meiosis produces four cells. Mitosis and meiosis both start with a diploid cell, 2N. However, at the end of mitosis, you also have two sets of chromosomes and there are two cells being made. During meiosis, you only have one set of chromosome being made. Mitosis is for body cells called somatic cells, also for growth and repair, repairing damaged cells. Basically, any cell that's not a sex cell will undergo mitosis in the body. In meiosis, it's just producing gametes, sperm and egg. In mitosis, there's no crossing over that we're going to talk about next. In meiosis, there is crossing over. And we can make a Venn diagram of this, so we're going to do that now. Let's go ahead and start by making sure that we have a comparison of mitosis versus my. Let's go ahead and copy this down. At this point, you should pause the podcast to give yourself time to copy this into your notes. This is page 7 of your notes. I'm going to move it up a little bit. And now you should pause the podcast again in order to make sure that you can get the bottom part of this full page of notes for page 7. Here we have our Venn diagram. This will be page 8 in your notes. Let's go and copy this down and pause the podcast at this time. All right. Quick review. Crossing over. During prophase 1, homologous pairs swap pieces of chromosomes. Now, if you're in honors biology, you're not going to be responsible for knowing this for your quizzes and tests. But if you're in AP biology, you do need to know this. The group of four sister chromatids, all next to each other, is called a tetrad. Tetris means four pieces in that game. Tetrad means four sister chromatids. During this time, we're going to swap little pieces of chromosomes, the very tips there, and that's going to increase the genetic diversity in the chromosomes being made. This is another source of genetic variation within, um, within the sex cells being made. We have a crossing order event. Then we have the breakage of the DNA, and then we have refusing the DNA to the new chromosomes. Meiosis introduces a lot of genetic variation to the cells. There are some benefits to that. Each human with 23 chromosomes can produce 2 to the 23rd power of different combination of sex cells, or about 8 million different possibilities for each sex cell being made. That's a lot of com possibilities. And then crossing over adds even more variation to the sex cells being made. The value of meiosis is to introduce genetic variation. Since you have two sources of genetic information, that's 2 to the 23rd times 2 to the 23rd power, that's a total of 70 trillion possibilities. You're not one in a million, you're one in 70 trillion. At this time, we're going to get some notes on the three sources of genetic variability. As well as crossing over. Go ahead and pause at this time, copy down your notes. So how does diversity affect natural selection? Well, more diversity means more chances something has a survival trait to help them survive in an environment. If the environment changes from white to, let's say, gray, even though this guy sticks out now, since there's a lot of variation in moth populations, this guy's going to have a better chance surviving once the environment changes. And that's why sex is important for the survival of the species. Let's go ahead and complete our notes.
Yeah, here's some questions to answer when we get finished. 